Every year, thousands of people decide to join these different selling platforms and they want to either create a brand new business for themselves or possibly just a side hustle. And within the first six months, 96% of those people either fail or completely quit their resale business. So in today's video, I'm going to give you guys the five reasons as to why I think 96% of these new resellers fail and you can avoid some of these same mistakes. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, y'all. So the first reason why 96% of new resellers fail is because they tend to focus on the gross revenue numbers as opposed to focusing on the actual profit numbers. So when I first started selling items on eBay, I started primarily with the items in my closet by selling a ton of clothing and old electronics that I wasn't using. And during that particular time, it really felt great because it almost felt like I was making free money. I was selling unwanted items. So of course, I wasn't thinking of a particular buy cost for those items. But when I started selling used clothing from like thrift stores and garage sales, I would buy those items for anywhere between two and five bucks. And then I would sell those items for sometimes 20, maybe 30, maybe even 40 bucks online. So once I was looking at my actual profit numbers, my profit numbers looked really, really good because my buy cost was super low however once I made a pivot and I moved to Arizona and I started doing more retail arbitrage and I started sourcing from places like Ross and Burlington and Marshalls and different outlets across the valley my buy cost went up by a ton I started sourcing sneakers from anywhere from like 60 to as much as $80 sometimes even a little more than that depending on the shoe and I would sell some of those shoes from anywhere between maybe a hundred sometimes 150 of course there would be some outliers where I would get some really really good shoes but for the most part I went from having a hundred sometimes 200 percent profit to sometimes 60 to maybe 90 percent profit so even though my gross numbers looked really really big my actual profit numbers went down so in order to kind of counterbalance that I had to do a ton of volume so when I was doing more shoes I would try to find shoes that would sell from like maybe 60 to 70 bucks and I would keep my buy cost as low as possible and at that particular time I would buy shoes for maybe between 20 and as much as maybe 30 bucks from different outlets and I would just focus on volume trying to buy a full size run fill up my car with about a hundred pairs of shoes and by focusing primarily on volume I was able to make more money however once you really break it down there's no wrong way to do it you just have to really focus on your actual profit as opposed to the gross revenue so another reason why 96 percent of new resellers fail is because they tend to focus on just selling really cheap items online and due to the influx of websites like Timu and Sheen and of course Amazon people are able to get really really cheap clothing online and it get and it comes to their door practically same day sometimes even overnight and it's really hard for some of these new resellers to compete with some of these really big retail giants especially when they're selling brand new clothing because you just have to think about it this way why would the typical consumer spend 20 bucks on a pair of used jeans when they can get a brand new pair of jeans for sometimes even 15 bucks that might not be the same brand but it looks exactly like what's trending nowadays in fashion so you definitely want to keep that in mind especially if you're a clothing seller you definitely want to make sure that you're not just getting stuck in just selling clothing and selling items that are really cheap and convenient to sell because just put it this way if you're going to be selling something that's really cheap and convenient for you to sell it's really easy and convenient for everybody else to do the same thing and you're gonna be you know competing with a ton of different people so you always want to just find your advantage amongst the tons of other resellers that's out there so number three and this is actually huge a lot of new resellers tend to just focus on selling one platform and I actually made this same mistake when I first started selling items online as well I was primarily just trying to sell items on eBay and after a few years I realized that I had to broaden my horizons because there were so many other platforms popping up like like Poshmark and Macari and Grail and StockX and Goat and so many different platforms that were available. I decided to start cross-listing a lot of those items and I was able to bring in some more profit, increase my sales and ultimately boost up my network as well because by selling on different platforms, you're building up your brand, you're building up your name on other platforms and that way if something was to happen on eBay or any singular platform for that matter, you'd still be able to run a profitable business because you don't have all of your eggs in one basket. However, another pro tip as opposed to just selling things online, another really good thing to do, especially if you're a new reseller and I realize a ton of people tend to shy away from this, is to sell locally. You definitely want to take advantage of selling items on platforms 
platforms like Facebook Marketplace and OfferUp because I know for a fact I used to tend to shy away from doing business locally. But once I started selling more items on platforms like OfferUp, I started to convert more sales and just make more money. So you definitely want to keep that in mind. You don't want to get so stuck on just being an online reseller, but think of it as being a reseller in general and selling online and in person. And if you want, you can start doing, you know, garage sales and being a vendor at a flea market. That's not necessarily my style, but I know some people kind of love the going back and forth and the negotiating, but you just always want to think of different ways that you can make money and overall just see more success within the resale business. So number four, and this is huge and I tend to see this pretty often as well, especially when it comes to brand new resellers, they literally just give up way too soon. Like I mentioned earlier, when you're selling items straight out of your closet, you don't tend to focus on your buy costs or anything like that. Maybe because you're just selling unwanted items around the house so in your mind it's just a hundred percent profit because that money was spent so long ago however once a lot of those unwanted items are already sold and you don't have any more sweaters or any more clothes in your closet that you don't need anymore a lot of people tend to give up because they might find difficulty when it comes to sourcing at thrift stores but you definitely just want to make sure that you're keeping your sourcing options open you might need to source online you might need to you know go into different facebook groups and try to buy things that way you might need to go to different garage sales or just travel a little further out of your neighborhood in order to find quality items and like I said, wholesaling is always an option, but you always want to make sure that you're just not limiting yourself to sourcing in one particular area. You have to make sure that you're, you know, you're looking at different places and different opportunities where you can make money. Because one thing that's helped me be able to move across the country as much as I have and still maintain a profitable business is not limiting myself to just one particular category or one particular source of, you know, inventory. And for me, that has been my key to success, keeping my eyes open, constantly doing research and not putting any limits on myself. So last but not least, and I kind of touched on that in the last one. And the main reason why 96% of new resellers fail is simply because they just don't continue to learn and do research. Now, when it comes to reselling and just conducting business in general, I feel like you have to constantly learn. You constantly have to improve your game and just try to up your game however you can. And for a lot of people, in my mind, I can kind of equate this to working in the tech industry. Tech is constantly changing, ever growing, and you have to keep up. And it's the same thing in terms of business and e-commerce in general. It's always something new, especially a new change to different platforms. It might be a new change in terms of taxes, a new change in terms of different laws that's going on. So you definitely want to constantly do research that way you're staying ahead of the game. But for me, I've realized that that is the ultimate key to success, constantly learning new categories, new places to source, constantly networking so that you're not limiting yourself to only having to source from stores. You just always want to make sure that you're constantly growing, constantly evolving, because like the popular phrase goes, if you're not evolving and you're not adapting, you're basically dying. In fact, five years ago, I actually made a video about the importance of always doing research and constantly learning and growing within your business. And during that time, I was talking specifically about the importance of learning about different categories and learning about different things that sell online and just how you can improve your business. So if you haven't watched that video, I'll make sure I'll link that right here for you guys so you can check that out. And until then, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.